Inferno, Canto Ten, The Sixth Circle, Heresy, Heretics. Now wends his way along a narrow path between the torments and the city's wall, my teacher, and behind his shoulders, I. O oh, lofty virtue, I began, that leads me around the impious circles at thy pleasure. Converse with me, and satisfy my wishes. The people that are lying in the tombs, could they be seen? For all the lids are raised, it seems, and there is no one keeping guard. And he to me, They all will be locked in, when from Jehoshaphat they here return, together with the bodies they have left above. On this side have their burial place with Epicurus, all his followers, who claim that with the body dies the soul. To the request, however, which thou makest, thou'lt soon receive a due reply in here, as also to the wish thou keepest from me. And I, good leader, I but keep my heart concealed from thee, in order to speak little, nor hast thou only now thereto disposed me. O oh, Tuscan! Thou that through the town of fire dost go alive with such respectful speech, in this place be thou pleased to stay thy steps. Thy very language makes thee manifest a native of that noble fatherland to which I was, perhaps, too great a bane. All of a sudden issued forth these words from one of those ark tombs, hence I in fear a little closer to my leader drew, and he said, Turn around. What dost thou? See Farinata, who has risen there. Thou'lt see him wholly from his girdle up. Already I had fixed mine eyes on his, and he was standing up with chest and head erect, as if he had great scorn for hell. My leader then, with bold and ready hands, pushed me between the sepulchres toward him, saying, Now let thy words be frank and clear. When I was neath his tomb, he looked at me a while, and then, as though disdainfully, he asked of me, Who were thine ancestors? And I, who was desirous to obey, hid it not from him, but revealed it all. Whereat he slightly raised his brows, and said, So bitterly were they opposed to me, and to mine ancestors, and to my party, that I on two occasions scattered them. If they were driven out, I answered him, from all directions they returned both times. Your people, though, have not well learned that art. A shade then at the tomb's uncovered mouth rose at his side as far up as his chin. I think that he had risen upon his knees. Round me he looked, as if he wished to see whether some other one were with me there. But when his doubt had wholly spent itself, weeping, he said, If thou through this blind prison dost go by reason of high-mindedness where is my son and why is he not with thee and i to him i come not by myself he who is waiting yonder leads me here one whom perhaps your guido held in scorn the nature of his torment and his words had read this person's name to me already on this account was my reply so full then of a sudden standing up, he cried, What saidst thou? Held? Is he not still alive? Doth not the sweet light strike upon his eyes? When he perceived the short delay I made before replying, Down upon his back he fell, nor outside showed himself again. The other one, meanwhile, the great-souled man, at whose request I stopped, Changed not his looks, nor did he move his neck, or turn his side and if continuing his previous words he said if they have badly learned that art far more doth that torment me than this bed and yet that lady's face who ruleth here shall not be lighted fifty times again ere thou shalt know how heavy that art is and so mayst thou return to the sweet world pray tell me why so pitiless toward mine that people is in every law of theirs. Whence I to him, The havoc and great slaughter which caused the Arbia to be coloured red, occasioned such petitions in our church. When, sighing, he had tossed his head, he said, In this thing I was not alone, nor surely had I, without due course, moved with the rest. But I was yonder, where assent was given, by every one to do away with Florence, 
the only one to openly defend her so may your seed eventually repose i begged of him untie for me i pray the knot which has perplexed my thinking here it seems if well i hear that ye behold beforehand that which time brings with itself while in the present ye do otherwise we see he said like one whose sight is poor things that are far from us to that extent the highest leader shines upon us still when they approach or are our intellect is wholly vain and we if others bring no news know nothing of your human state hence thou canst understand that holy dead will be our knowledge from that moment on when closed shall be the gateway of the future thereat for i was grieved at my mistake i said you'll therefore tell that fallen man his son is dwelling with the living still and if in answering i was mute just now cause him to know it was because my thoughts were struggling with the problem you have solved and now my teacher was recalling me with greater haste i therefore begged the spirit that he would tell me who was with him there he said with over a thousand here i lie the second frederick and the cardinal are here within i speak not of the rest he thereupon concealed himself and i those words recalling which seemed hostile to me back toward the ancient poet turned my steps the latter moved and then as on we went he said to me why art thou so perplexed and him in what he asked i satisfied then let thy mind preserve that sage enjoined what thou hast heard against thyself pay now attention here his finger then he raised when in the sweet ray's presence thou shalt be of her whose lovely eyes see everything from her thou'lt know the journey of thy life thereafter to the left he turned his feet we left the wall and toward the middle went along a path which to a valley leads which even up there unpleasant made its stench end of inferno canto ten inferno canto eleven the sixth circle heresy the distribution of the damned in the inferno upon the utmost verge of a high bank formed in a circle by great broken rocks we came upon a still more cruel pack and there by reason of the horrible excess of stench the deep abyss exhales for shelter we withdrew behind the lid of a large tomb whereon i saw a scroll which said pope anastasius i contain whom out of the right way photinus drew our going down from here must be delayed so that our sense may first get used a little to this foul blast we shall not mind it then the teacher thus and i find thou therefore some compensation lest our time be lost and he to me see how i think of this my son within these rocks he then began are three small circles which from grade to grade are similar to those thou leavest now full of accursed spirits are they all but that hereafter sight alone suffice thee hear how and wherefore they are packed together of all wrongdoing which in heaven wins hate injustice is the end and each such end aggrieves by either violence or fraud but whereas fraud is man's peculiar evil god hates it most therefore the fraudulent are down below and greater pain assails them all the first circle holds the violent but since against three persons force is used its shape divides it into three great rings both against god one's neighbour and oneself may force be used against themselves i mean and what is theirs as clearly shown thou'lt hear by force both death and painful wounds are given one's neighbour and thereby his property is ruined burned and by extortions robbed the first ring hence torments in separate troops all homicides and those that smite with malice spoilers of property and highway robbers upon oneself may one lay violent hands and on one's goods hence in the second ring must needs repentant be without avail whoever of your world deprives himself gambles away and dissipates his means 
and weepeth there where he should joyful be. Gainst God may force be used by wittingly denying that he is, by blasphemy, and by despising nature and his goodness. And therefore with its mark the lesser ring sealeth both Sodom and Cahor, and him who, speaking from his heart, despises God. And fraud, whereby all consciences are bitten, one may employ against a man who trusts him, and against a man who storeth up no trust. This latter kind of fraud would seem to kill only the bond of love which nature makes. Hence, in the second circle make their nest hypocrisy and flatteries, and workers of magic, coining, theft, and simony, pandas and grafters, and such filth as these. In the other way forgotten is the love which nature makes, and that which afterward is joined thereto, when special trust is born. Hence in the smallest ring, where the universe its centre hath, and on which this is seated, whoever betrays is spent eternally. Teacher, said I, thine argument proceeds most lucidly, and full well classifies this deep abyss and those that people it. But tell me now, those of the muddy marsh, those whom the wind drives, those the rain beats down, and those that with such keen tongues meet each other, why aren't they punished in the red-hot town, if God be angry with them? And if not, why are they tortured in those several ways? And he to me, Why doth thine intellect wander so far from that which is its wont, or doth thy mind intently gaze elsewhere? Hast thou no recollection of the words with which thine ethics treats extensively, the dispositions three which heaven rejects, incontinence and malice, and insane bestiality, and how incontinence offends God least, and hence receives least blame. If thou consider this opinion well, and then remember who those are above that outside undergo their punishment, well shalt thou see why from these wretches here they are set apart, and why less wrathfully vengeance divine is hammering on them here. O son that healest every troubled sight, thou so contentest me when answering questions that doubt no less than knowledge pleases me. Return a little further back, said I, to where thou sayest usury offends goodness divine, and loose the tangled knot. Philosophy, said he to me, points out to him that understandeth it, and not in one part only, that nature takes her course from the intellect divine and from its art, and if thou note thy physics carefully, after not many pages shalt thou find that your art follows that as best it can, as the disciple him who teaches. Hence your art is grandchild, as it were, to God. From these two things, if thou recall to mind the first of Genesis, must people needs obtain their livelihood, and progress make. And as the usurer takes another course, nature both in herself and in her follower, he scorneth, since in something else he trusts. But follow me now, for I please to go, because the fishes o'er the horizon quiver, and wholly over chorus lies the wane, and one descends the bank much further on. End of Inferno Canto 11 Inferno Canto 12 The Seventh Circle, The First Ring Violence Against One's Fellow Man Murderers and Spoilers Phlegathon The place, where to descend the bank we came, was alp-like, and through what was also there, such that all eyes would be repelled by it. As is that downfall on the hither side of Trent, which sidewise smote the Adige, through earthquake or through failure of support. Since from the mountain's summit, whence it moved down to the plain, the rock is shattered so, that it would yield a path for one above. Even such was the descent of that ravine, and on the border of the broken bank was stretched at length the infamy of Crete, who in the seeming heifer was conceived. And when he saw us there, he bit himself, like one whom inward anger overcomes. In his direction then my sage cried out, Dost thou perhaps think Athens' duke is here, 
who gave thee death when in the world above be gone thou beast for this man cometh not taught by thy sister but is going by in order to behold your punishments as doth a bull who from his leash breaks free the moment he receives the mortal blow and cannot walk but plunges here and there so doing i beheld the minotaur and he aware cried out run to the pass tis well that while he rages thou descend thereat we made our way adown that heap of fallen rocks which often neath my feet were moved because of their unwonted load i went along in thought and he perchance thou thinkest of this landslide which is guarded by that beast's anger which i quenched just now now i would have thee know that when down here to nether hell i came that other time this mass of rock had not yet fallen down but certainly if i remember well not long ere he arrived who carried off from this the highest circle's mighty prey on every side the deep and foul abyss so trembled that i thought the universe had felt the love whereby as some believe the world to chaos hath been oft reduced and at that moment this old mass of rock was thus both here and elsewhere overthrown but turn thine eyes down yonder now for lo the stream of blood is drawing near to us wherein boils who by violence harms others o oh, blind cupidity o oh, foolish wrath that so dost in our short life goad us on and after in the eternal steep us thus i saw a wide moat curving in an arc and such that it embraces all the plain according as my escort had informed me and in a file between it and the bank centaurs were running by with arrows armed as in the world it was their wont to hunt on seeing us descend they all stopped short and three of them detached them from the troop with bows and arrows they had chosen first and one cried from afar ye that is sense the slope to what pain are ye coming tell it from there or else i draw my bow my teacher said our answer we will give to chiron yonder when we reach his side thus ever to thy harm was thy will rash he touched me then and said that one is nessus who died for lovely digenera's sake and who himself wrought vengeance for himself the middle one who gazes at his breast is that great chiron who brought up achilles the other pholus who so wrathful was they go by thousands round about the moat shooting each soul that from the blood emerges further than its own sin allotted it to those swift-footed beasts we then drew near chiron an arrow took and with its notch backward upon his jaws he pushed his beard when he had thus uncovered his great mouth he said unto his mates are ye aware that he who comes behind moves what he touches yet dead men's feet are not thus one to do and my good leader who now reached his breast where the two natures are together joined replied he lives indeed and thus alone must i need show to him the dark abyss necessity is leading him not pleasure one who withdrew from singing praise to god gave me this new commission he is not a highwayman nor i a robber's soul but by the power through whom i move my steps along so wild a road bestow on us one of thy troop at whose side we may be and who may show us where one fords and carry this man upon his back for he is not a spirit who can travel through the air upon his right breast chiron turned and said to nessus turn around and guide them thus and if another troop should meet you cause it to stand aside then we with this safe escort skirted the edge of that red boiling stream wherein the boiled were crying out aloud i saw some people in it to their brows these tyrants are the mighty centaur said who took to bloodshed and to plundering here tears are shed because of heartless wrongs here alexander is and who for years grieved sicily fierce dionysus the brow which has so black a herd of hair is azolino 
the other which is blond or biso of este who in truth was quenched up in the world by his unnatural son i turned then toward the poet but he said be he now first to thee and second i a little further on the centaur stopped over some people who it seemed emerged out of that boiling river from their necks on one side there a lonely shade he showed us and said he yonder in god's bosom pierced the heart which still is honoured on the thames then people i beheld who from the stream held out their heads and even all their chest and many did i recognize of these thus shallower and shallower became that blood until it only cooked their feet here was the place for us to ford the ditch even as thou seest that the boiling stream grows shallow more and more on this side here the centaur said i wish thee to believe that on this other side its bottom sinks increasingly until it joins the place where it behoveth tyranny to groan justice divine is over here tormenting that attila was a scourge on earth pyrrhus and sextus and forever milks the tears which with the boiling it unlocks from rinier da coneto and rinier pazzo who on the high roads waged so great a war he then turned back and crossed the ford again end of inferno canto twelve inferno canto thirteen the seventh circle the second ring violence against oneself suicides and squanderers not yet had nessus reached the other side when we had set our steps within a wood which was not marked by any path whatever no green leaves there but leaves of gloomy hue no smooth and straight but gnarled and twisted twigs nor was there any fruit but poison thorns no thickets rough and dense as these are owned by those wild beasts that hate the tilled estates that lie between the cecina and corneto herein those ugly harpies make their nest who drove the trojans from the strophides with gloomy prophecies of future loss wide wings they have and human necks and faces their feet are clawed and feathered their great bellies they utter wailings on the uncouth trees my kindly teacher then began to say before thou enter any further know that in the second ring thou art and wilt be until thou reach the horrid plain of sand hence look around thee well and things thou'lt see that from my words would take away belief moans i heard uttered upon every side but saw no person who might make them there hence utterly confused i checked my steps i think he thought i thought that all those voices were uttered from among those thorny trunks by people hiding there on our account the teacher therefore said if thou break off a little twig from any of these trees the thoughts thou hast will all be proven false i then stretched out my hand a little way and from a sturdy thorn tree plucked a twig whereat its trunk cried out why dost thou rend me then after growing dark with blood its cry began again why dost thou break me off hast thou no spirit of compassion in thee men we were once and now our stocks become thy hand ought surely to have more pity even if the souls of serpents we had been as from a fresh green log that at one end is being burned and at the other drips and makes a hissing with the escaping air so from the broken twig together issued both words and blood i therefore dropped the end and stood dumbfounded like a man who fears had he before been able to believe a wounded soul replied my sage to him what in my verses only he has seen he had not set his hand on thee whereas the thing's incredibility has made me lead him to do what i myself regret but tell him who thou wast that he by way of compensation may refresh thy fame up in the world where he can still return the trunk with sweet words thou dost entice me that i cannot keep still be not annoyed if i am tempted to a little talk i am the man who once held both the keys of frederick's heart and he who turned them round so gently lacking and unlocking it 
that most men from his secrets I withheld. So faithful was I to my glorious charge that for its sake I lost both sleep and strength. The courtesan who never turned away her harlot eyes from Caesar's dwelling place, a common form of death and vice of courts, gainst me inflamed the minds of everyone, and those on fire inflamed Augustus so that my glad honours turned to wretched grief. My mind, to vent its feelings of disdain and thinking to avoid disdain by death, made me unjust against myself, the just. By this tree's uncouth roots, I swear to you, I never broke the faith I owed my lord, who so deserving was of reverence. And to the world should one of you return, let him assist my memory, which still lies crushed beneath the blow which envy gave it. A while he waited, then the poet said, since he is still, lose not thy chance, but speak and ask him other questions if thou like. Whence I to him, ask thou again whate'er thou thinkest satisfactory to me, for I could not, such pity stirs my heart. Hence he began again. So may this man do freely for thee what thy words request, imprisoned spirit. May it please thee still to tell us how within these knotted trunks a soul is bound and tell us, if thou canst, if any from such limbs is ever freed. Thereat the trunk blew hard, and afterward that wind was changed into the following words. Briefly shall a reply be made to you, whenever a wild spirit leaves the body, from which itself hath torn itself away, Minos commits it to the seventh ravine. Into the woods it falls, nor is a place allotted to it, but where fortune hurls it, there, like a grain of sped, it germinates. It grows into a sapling and wild tree. The harpies, feeding then upon its leaves, cause pain to it, and for the pain a vent. Like other spirits, for our spoils will come, though not that any be reclothed therewith, for it is not right to have what one casts off. We'll drag them with us here, and then our bodies will all around the dismal wood be hung each on the thorn tree of its hostile shade. We still were giving heed unto the trunk, believing that it wished to tell us more, when we were startled by a sudden noise, as likewise he is who perceives a boar and pack of hounds approach his hunting post, and hears the crashing of the beasts and boughs. And lo, two on the left, who naked were and scratched, and fled away so rapidly they shattered all the branches of the wood, the one ahead now hurry, hurry, death! And the other one, who thought himself too slow, cried, Lano, not so knowing were thy legs, when running from Del Topo's battle jousts. And then, perhaps because of failing breath, he there made of himself and of a bush a group. The wood behind these two was full of swarthy bitches, ravenous and fleet as greyhounds are, when from their chains unleashed. Into the one who crouched they set their teeth, and tore him into pieces bit by bit. They then made off with those his suffering limbs. Thereat my escort took me by the hand, and led me to the bush, which all in vain out of its bleeding rents was shedding tears. O Giacomo, it said, The San Andrea, what boots it thee to make a screen of me, and how am I to blame for thy bad life? When over him my teacher stopped, he said, Who then wast thou, that through so many gashes art blowing forth with blood such painful speech? And he to us, O spirits that have come, in time to see the unbecoming havoc, which from me thus hath torn away my leaves, collect them at the foot of my sad bush. I to that town belonged which for the Baptist changed its first patron, wherefore he, for this, will always make her mournful with his art, and were it not that on the Arno's bridge there lingers still some little glimpse of him, those townsmen who rebuilt her afterward, over the ashes left by Attila, had caused that work to be performed in vain, I made myself a gibbet of my house. End of Inferno Canto 13 Inferno Canto 14 The Seventh Circle, The Third Ring Violence Against God 
blasphemers. Since love for my own native place constrained me, I gathered up the scattered twigs and leaves, and gave them back to him who now was weak. Thence to the bound we came, where from the third the second ring is severed, and wherein a frightful form of justice may be seen. To manifest aright what here was new, I say that we had reached a barren plain, which from its bed removeth every plant. The woeful wood is as a garland round it, as round the former is the dismal moat. There on its very edge we stayed our steps. Its soil was of a dense and arid sand, whose nature differed in no way from that which once was trodden by the feet of Cato. Vengeance of God, how much by every one thou oughtest to be feared, who readeth here what to these eyes of mine was manifest. Of naked souls I many flocks beheld, who all wept very sorely, while on each a different law appeared to be imposed. A few lay on the ground upon their backs, and some were seated cuddled up together, while others moved about continually. Most numerous were those that moved around, and least so those that under torment lay, but all the freer had their tongues to wail. Down on the whole great waste of sand there rained with gentle fall dilated flakes of fire, like flakes of snow that fall on windless alps as were the flames which Alexander saw in India's torrid regions, as they fell upon his hosts, unbroken to the ground. And this he met by ordering his troops to trample on the soil, because the flames, when single, were more easily put out. Even such descended here the eternal heat, whereby the sand was set on fire, as tinder is kindled under steel, to double pain. And ever without resting was the dance of wretched hands, that kept now here, now there, slapping away each latest burning flake. Thou, teacher, I began, that conquerest all, except the stubborn devils who came out against us at the entrance of the gate. Who is that great one who seems not to mind the fire, but lies there scornful and awry, so that the rain seems not to ripen him? And that same one, who had observed that I concerning him was questioning my leader, cried, As I was alive, such am I dead. Is Jove should tire that smith of us, from whom in wrath he took the pointed thunderbolt, wherein I smitten was that final day? Or should he tire the others, each in turn, in Mongio bellow smithy black with smoke, by calling out, Help! Help, good Vulcan! Help! even as he did on Flerga's battlefield, and should he shoot at me with all his might, no glad revenge would he obtain thereby. Thereat my leader spoke with so much force that I had never heard him use the like. In that thine arrogance, O Capanius, is not extinguished, art thou all the more chastised. No torment, saving thine own rage, were for thy furious pride a fitting pain. Then, with a gentler mien, he turned to me, and said, One of the seven kings was he who Thebes besieged. He held, and seems to hold, God in disdain, and little seems to prize him. But, as I told him, his own spitefulness is fit enough adornment for his breast. Now follow me, and see that thou meanwhile set not thy feet upon the burning sand, but to the thicket keep them ever close. In silence we went on, and came to where, out of the wood, a little stream spurts forth, whose ruddy colour makes me shudder still. As from the Bulikame springs a brook, which afterward the sinful women share, even so went that one down across the sand. Its bottom and both sides had turned to stone, as also had the embankments on each side. I hence perceived the crossing-place was there. Of all the other things which I have shown thee, since first we entered through the outer gate, whose threshold unto no one is denied, nothing has ever by thine eyes been seen as notable as is this present brook, which deadens over itself all little flames. These were my leader's words. I therefore begged that he would freely grant to me the food, desire of which he had so freely given. Amid the sea there lies a wasted land, he told me thereupon, 
whose name is Crete, under whose king the world of old was pure. There is a mountain there, which, happy once with waters and green leaves, was Ida called. Tis now abandoned like a thing outworn. Wylam, as trusty cradle for her son, Rhea, selected it, and when he wept to hide him better, caused a shouting there. Within that mountain stands a great old man, who holds his shoulders to a damiata turned, and who, as at his mirror, looks at Rome. His head is formed of finest gold, his arms and breast are of the purest silver, then, as far as to his loins, he is made of brass. All chosen iron is he down from there, save that baked clay his right foot is, and straighter he stands on that than on the other foot. Each of these parts, except the golden one, is broken by a cleft whence trickle tears, which, when collected, perforate that cave. From rock to rock they course into this vale. Then Acheron with Styx and Phlegaton they form, and through this narrow duct descend as far as where one goes no further down. They form Cochytus there, and what that pool is like thou'lt see, hence here it is not told. And I to him, if thus this present stream has from our world descended, why alone on this ring's edge hath it appeared to us? And he... Thou knowest that the place is round, and though a long way thou hast gone already, ere to the left, descending toward the bottom, through the whole circle thou hast not yet gone. Wherefore, if aught that's new appear to us, it should not bring amazement to thy face. And I again, but where are Phlegathon and Lethe, teacher? For of this one silent, thou sayest the other of this rain is made. And he replied, Thou certainly dost please me in all thy questions, but the red streams boiling ought surely to have answered one of them. Lethe thou'lt see but there, outside this cave, where the souls go to wash themselves, when once their sin, repented of, has been removed. And then he said, It is now time for us to leave the wood. See that thou follow me. The banks which are not burned afford a path and up above them every flame is quenched. End of Inferno Canto 14 Inferno Canto 15 The Seventh Circle, Third Ring Violence Against Nature, Sodomites One of the hard embankments bears us now, and overhead the brook's mist shades them so, that from the fire it saves the stream and banks. Such bulwarks as to keep the sea away the Flemings make between Vitsand and Bruges, through fearing lest the high tide break upon them, and as the Paduans make along the Brenta, their villages and strongholds to defend, ere Chiarentana feel the summer heat. In such a way were those embankments made, although the master did not make them there so high or thick, whoe'er he may have been. So far we were already from the wood, that I could not have seen just where it was, even had I turned around to look behind, when we a band of spirits met who came along the bank, each one of whom looked hard at us, as in the evening one is wont to look at people when the moon is new. And toward us they were knitting close their brows, as an old tailor at his needle's eye. When by that gathering I had thus been eyed, one of them who had recognized me, seizing my garment's hem, exclaimed, oh, How wonderful! And I, when toward me he had stretched his arm, fastened upon his roasted face, mine eyes, so that, though blistered, it did not prevent mine intellect from recognizing him. And downward having bent my face toward his, I answered him, Are you here, Ser Brunetto? And that one, Oh, my son, be not displeased, should Brunetto Latini a little way turn back with thee, and let the troop go on. I beg you to, with all my power, said I, and if you'd have me sit with you, I will, if it please that one, for with him I go. O oh, son, he said, 
whoever of this herd stands still at all lies prone a hundred years nor shields himself when smitten by the fire therefore go on i'll follow at thy skirts and then i'll join again my company which goes bewailing its eternal loss i dared not from the path descend to go upon his level there but held my head bowed down like one who walks in reverence and he began what fortune or what fate before thy last day leadeth thee down here and who is he that showeth thee the way i answered him when in the life serene up yonder in a vale i lost my way before my age had rounded out its noon thereon i turned my back but yester morn this one as i returned to it appeared to me and o'er this path now leads me home and he to me if thy known star thou follow thou canst not fail to reach a glorious port if in the lovely life i judged aright and had i not so prematurely died i seeing heaven so well disposed towards thee had given thee comfort in thy work <laughs> but that ungrateful wicked people which of old came down from Thiesole, and which e'en now smacks of the mountain and of hard grey stone for thy well-doing shall become thy foe and rightly for among the acid sobs it is not fitting that sweet figs bear fruit an old fame in the world proclaims them blind a greedy envious overweening folk see to it that thou cleanse thee from their ways thy fortune hath in store for thee such honour that either party shall be hungry for thee but distant from the goat shall be the grass <laughs> let then the beasts of fiesole make litter with their own selves nor let them touch the plant if on their dung-heap any perchen still in which the sacred seed may live again of those old romans who remained therein when of such wickedness the nest was made if perfectly fulfilled had been my prayer i then replied to him you had not yet been banished from the natural life of man for in my mind is fixed and stirs e'en now my heart that dear and kind paternal face you showed when in the world from time to time you taught me how man makes himself eternal and how much gratitude i feel for this must while i live be in my words perceived what of my course you tell i write and keep with other texts for a lady to explain who can if i ever attain to her i only wish that this be clear to you that i if but my conscience chide me not am ready for whatever fortune wills not new unto mine ears is such reward hence as she lists let fortune turn her wheel and let the country clown his mattock ply Thereat my teacher over his right cheek turned back and looked at me, and then he said, He listens well who giveth heed to this. Nor speaking less do I on this account go on with Ser Brunetto, asking who his fellows were of greatest note and rank, and he to me, It is well to know of some. Our silence on the rest will merit praise for short the time were for so long a talk know then in brief that clerics were they all and mighty men of letters of great fame soiled by the self-same sin when in the world and with that sad crowd yonder priscian goes and francis of a course or two and him if thou hadst had a longing for such scurf 
thou couldst have seen there whom the servant servant changed from the arno to the bacilione where he behind him left his ill-strained nerves <sighs> i'd speak of more but i can come and talk no further for a new dust-cloud i see rising o'er yonder on the sandy plain people with whom i must not be are coming let my tesoro in which i'm still alive be recommended thee i ask no more then round he turned and seemed to be of those who at verona run across the meadow to win the green cloth and of these he seemed not he who loses, but the one who wins. End of Inferno Canto 15 Inferno Canto 16 The Seventh Circle, The Third Ring Violence Against Nature, Sodomites I now was where the booming of the water which fell into the following round was heard like the dull buzzing sound which beehives make, when three shades separated from a group which neath the rain's tormenting punishment was passing by, and ran along together. Toward us they came, and each of them cried out, Stop thou! That by thy guard dost seem to us a citizen of our corrupted town. Alas, what wounds I saw upon their limbs, both old and recent, by the flames burnt in! It pains me still but to remember them. My leader, giving heed to these their cries, turned his face round toward me, and said, now wait to those men yonder curtsy is due and were not for the fire which arrow-like the nature of the place shoots forth i'd say that haste were more becoming thee than them and they when we had stopped began again their old refrain and after they had reached us all three of them made of themselves a wheel as champions oiled and nude are wont to do when looking for an advantageous grip before they come to giving blows and wounds. Thus as he wheeled, each turned his face toward me, so that his feet continuous journey made in opposite direction to his neck. And one began, Even if the wretched nature of this soft place, and our burned, shriveled faces, bring us and our requests into contempt, still let our reputation bend thy mind, to tell us who thou art that dost so safely rub on the soil of hell thy living feet he in whose footprints thou dost see me tread was though he go both nude and hairless now of higher rank than thou believest him he was the grandson of the good gualdrada his name was guido guerra and when alive, his wisdom and his sword accomplish much. The other, who behind me treads the sand, Tejero Aldebrandi is, whose voice should have been welcomed in the world above. And I, who with them am tormented here, Jacopo Rusticucci was, and surely my shrewish wife than aught else hurts me more if i had been protected from the fire i would have leapt into their midst below and i believe my leader had allowed it but since i should have burned and baked myself fear was victorious over my good will which made me eager to embrace them there i then began your state impressed within me not scorn but so much pain that only late will all of it entirely disappear as soon as this my lord said words to me, because of which I thought within myself that there were people coming such as you. Of your own town am I, and evermore have I your doings and your honoured names related, and heard mentioned with regard. I leave the Gaul, and for the sweet fruit go, which my veracious leader promised me. But to the centre must I first descend. So may thy spirit lead thy members long. The former thereupon replied to me, And, after thou art gone, thy fame be bright. Tell me if courtesy and worth abide within our town, as they were wont to do, or whether they have wholly gone from it. 
for guilermo borsieri who but newly has been in pain with us and with our mates goes yonder grieves us greatly with his words the people newly come and sudden gains have bred in thee such pride and such excess that florence thou art even now in pain thus with uplifted face i cried whereat the three who this as answer understood looked at each other as one looks at truth if satisfying others other times cost thee so little happy thou that thus at thy sweet will dost speak they all replied hence so must thou from these dark places saved return to see the lovely stars again when saying i was there shall do thee good see that thou tell the people about us they then broke up their wheel and in their flight it seemed as if their nimble legs were wings amen could not have been as quickly said as they then disappeared my teacher therefore thought it advisable for us to leave i followed him and not far had we gone before the water's noise was so near by that had we spoken we had not been heard and as the stream which is the first that eastward from monteveso takes a separate course upon the left slope of the apennines and which above is aquaqueta called before it flows into its lowly bed and at forli is of that name deprived booms loud because of falling o'er a cliff above san benedetto of the alp where for a thousand there should refuge be even thus as o'er a precipice it fell we found that coloured water roaring so that very soon it would have hurt our ears i had a cord around me girt wherewith i once had thought that i could capture the leopard with the brightly coloured hide when from me i had wholly loosened it even as my leader had commanded me i coiled it up and held it out to him thereat upon his right he turned around and hurled it to some distance from the edge down into that profound and dark abyss surely some strange new thing must needs reply said i within myself to this strange signal which with his eye my teacher follows thus ah with what caution men should deal with those who see not only what is done by others but with their wisdom see into their thoughts he said to me what i am waiting for and what thy thought now dreams will soon come up soon to thy vision will it be revealed heir to a truth that hath a falsehood's face ought one to close his lips as best he can for though one faultless be it brings him shame but i cannot suppress it here hence reader even by the verses of this comedy so may they not be void of lasting favour i swear to thee that through that coarse dark air i saw a shape which would have chilled with wonder however brave a heart come swimming up as he returns who going down at times to clear an anchor clinging to a reef or aught else lying hidden in the sea above extends and draweth in below end of inferno canto sixteen inferno canto seventeen the seventh circle the third ring violence against art usurers behold the wild beast with the pointed tail which crossing mountains breaks through walls and armour behold who sickens all the world with stench my leader thus began to speak to me and signalled to it to approach the edge near where the marble we had traversed ended and that foul image of deceit came on and landed on the bank its head and chest but o'er the edge it drew not up its tail its face was as the face of a just man so pleasing outwardly was its complexion the body of a serpent all the rest two paws it had all hairy to the armpits its back and breast as well as both its sides were painted o'er with snares and wheel-like shields ne'er with more colours in its woof and warp did turks or tartars manufacture cloth nor by arachne were such webs designed as flat boats sometimes lie upon the shore in water partly partly on the land and as among the greedy germans yonder the beaver seats himself to wage his war so lay that worst of beasts upon the edge which closes in the sandy plain with stone all of its tail was quivering in the void and twisting upward its envenomed fork which like a scorpion's weapon armed its tip 
our path must turn aside a little now, my leader said to me, until we reach that wicked beast reclining over there. Around our right breast, therefore, we went down and took ten paces on the very edge, thus surely to avoid both sand and fire. And after we had come to it, I saw upon the sand a little further on some people sitting near the precipice. My teacher then, that thou mayst take with thee a full experience of this ring, go on, and see the nature of the life they lead. There be thy conversation brief. Meanwhile, till thou return, I'll talk with this wild beast, that its strong shoulders may be yielded us. Thus further on, along the outer edge of that seventh circle, all alone I went, to where the melancholy people sat. Out of their eyes their woe was bursting forth, first here, then there they helped them with their hands, now from the flame, now from the heated soil. Not otherwise do dogs in summer time, now with their paws and with their muzzles now, when e'er by fleas or flies or gadflies bitten. When on the face of some I set mine eyes, on whom the woeful fire is falling there, I knew not one of them, but I perceived that from the neck of each there hung a pouch, which had a certain colour and design, wherewith their eyes appeared to feed themselves. And as I, looking, came into their midst, azure upon a yellow pouch I saw, which had the form and semblance of a lion. Then, as my gaze continued on its course, another I beheld, as red as blood, exhibiting a goose more white than butter. And one of them, who had his small white pouch emblazoned with an azure pregnant sow, said to me, what dost thou in this our ditch? Now go thy way, and since thou livest still, know that my fellow townsman, Vitaliano, will sit beside me here upon my left. I, with these Florentines, a Paduan am, and very frequently they stun my ears by shouting, Let the sovereign knight arrive, who'll bring with him the pocket with three beaks. Here with his mouth he twisted, sticking out his tongue as doth an ox that licks its nose. And I, afraid lest any longer stay might anger him who warned me to be brief, turned from those weary spirits back again. I found my leader who had climbed already upon the back of that fierce animal, and said to me, Now be thou strong and bold, by stairs like these shall we descend hereafter. Climb thou in front, for midst I wish to be, so that the tail may do no injury. Like one with quartan fever's chill so near that pale already are his fingernails, and that but looking at the shade he shudders. Such at the words he uttered I became. But that shame made its threats to me which renders a servant strong when in a good lord's presence. As on those horrid shoulders I sat down, I wished to tell him, See that thou embrace me. My voice, however, came not as I thought. But he who succoured me at other times and other straits, as soon as I was up, encircled and sustained me with his arms. And then he said, Now, Geryon, move thou on, wide be thy wheels, and gradual thy descent. Bethink thee of the unwanted load thou hast. As from its mooring place a little boat backs slowly out, even so did he withdraw, and when he wholly felt himself in play to where his breast had been, he turned his tail and moved the latter, stretched out like an eel, while with his paws he gathered in the air. I do not think that there was greater fear when Phaeton let go his horse's reins, whereby, as still appears, the sky was burned, nor yet when wretched Icarus perceived his back unfeathering through the melting wax, while calling him his father cried, Thou holst an evil course, than mine was, when I saw that I was in the air on every side, and gone the sight of all things save the beast. The latter, swimming slowly, wends his way, wheels and descends, but I perceive it not, save by the wind below and in my face. The waterfall I now heard on the right, making a horrid roar beneath us, hence I outward thrust my head with eyes turned down. More fearful of the abyss I then became, for fires I now beheld, and wailings heard. Hence trembling I clung closer with my thighs, and then, for I perceived it not before, by the great torments which on diverse sides drew near, I saw our wheeling and descent. 
even as a falcon long upon the wing which without seeing lure or game bird makes the falconer say alas thou comest down descendeth weary through a hundred rings whence he had swiftly started and alights far from his lord in angry sullenness so likewise gerion set us down below close to the bottom of the rough-hewn rock and of our persons rid as fast as flies an arrow from a bowstring sped away End of Inferno, Canto 17 Inferno, Canto 18 The Eighth Circle, Fraud, The First Trench Panders and Seducers, The Second Trench Flatterers and Prostitutes A place there is in hell called Male Bolge, holy of stone and of an iron hue, as is the round wall which encircles it. Right in the midst of its malicious field yawneth a well exceeding wide and deep, of whose construction in its place i'll speak round therefore is the girdle which remains between the well and that hard high wall's base and ten great trenches subdivide its bed as is the appearance which where many moats encircle castles for the wall's protection the section where they are presents such was the one those trenches furnished here and just as in such fortresses small bridges stretch from their thresholds to the outmost bank so crags ran from the bottom of the cliff across the banks and trenches to the well which gathering them together cuts them off in this place then we found ourselves when dropped from gerion's back the poet thereupon held to the left and i behind him moved upon the right side i beheld new cause for sympathy new pains and scourges new wherewith the first trench was completely filled. Down at its bottom naked were the sinners. This side, the middle facing us they came, beyond it with us, but with quicker steps. Means such as those which at the jubilee the Romans took, because of its great throng, to have the people pass across the bridge, who toward the castle all on one side face, and toward St. Peter's go their way, while all move toward the mountain on the other edge this side and that upon the dark stone floor horned demons with great scourges i beheld who from behind were fiercely whipping them ah how they caused them to lift them up their heels when by the first blows smitten certainly none waited for the second or the third while i was going on mine eyes were met by one of them and instantly i said i fast not from a previous sight of him to make him out I therefore stayed my feet, and having stopped with me my gentle leader assented to my going back a little. That scourged one thought that he could hide himself by looking down, but little it availed him, for, Thou that castest down thine eyes, said I, unless the features which thou hast are false, venedico cacianimico art. But what brings thee into such pungent sources? And he to me, unwillingly i tell it but forced i am by thy transparent speech which makes me recollect the olden world i was the one who led gisola bella to do according to the marquis's will however the disgusting tale be told nor am i here the only bolognese that weeps nay this place is so full of us that not so many tongues are taught to-day between savena and reno to say pipa and if thereof thou wouldst have pledged your proof recall to mind our avaricious breasts as thus he spoke a demon with his lash smote him and said to him pander be gone there are no women here to sell for coin i then rejoined my escort whereupon when we had taken some few steps we came to where a crag projected from the bank this we ascended with the greatest ease and turning to the right along its ridge we left those everlasting circling walls when we were where it hollows out below to let the scourged pass through my leader said now stay thy steps and on thee let the sight of all these other ill-born spirits strike whose faces thou hast not perceived as yet because they've gone with us in our direction as from the ancient bridge we watched the troop which on the other side was toward us coming and which the scourge was likewise driving on without my asking my good teacher said look at that great man there who as he comes for all his pain seems not to shed a tear 
how royal an appearance he still keeps. Jason is he, who, by his doughtiness and wit, deprived the Colchians of their ram. He passed the Isle of Lemos on his way, after its pitiless and daring women had given up to death their every male. With tokens of his love and flattering words, he there deceived the maid Hypsipyle, who previously had all the rest deceived. He left her there with child, and all alone, him to this punishment that fault condemns, and for Medea too is vengeance wrought. With him go those that in this way deceive, be this enough to know of this first ditch, and of those too that in its fangs it holds. Already were we where the narrow path forms with the second bank across, and makes therewith abutments for another arch. We thence heard people in the following trench who whined and groaned, and with their muzzles puffed, while smiting their own bodies with their palms. The banks were crusted over with a mould by vapour from below, which sticking there, offensive to both eyes and nose, became. So deep the bottom that there is no means of looking into it, unless one climb the archer's summit, where the crag is highest. Thither we came, and from it in the ditch people I saw immersed in excrement, which seemed from human privies to have come. While peering with mine eyes down there, I saw a head so foul with filth, that whether clerk's or layman's head it were, was not apparent. Scolding, he said, Why greedier art thou to look at me than at the other foul ones? And I, Because if I remember well, I've seen thee with dry hair ere now, for thou Alessio in terminei of Luca art. That's why I eye thee more than all the rest. And he then, as he beat upon his pate, Those flatteries immersed me here below, Wherewith my tongue was never surfeited. Then, after this, my leader said to me, See that thou urge thy glance a little further, That with thine eyes thou quite attain the face Of that disgusting and dishevelled wench, Who yonder claws herself with filthy nails, and crouches now, and now is on her feet. That Theus is, the prostitute, who answered her paramour when he had said, Have I great thanks from thee? Nay, marvellously great. Herewith, then, let our sight be satisfied. End of Inferno Canto 18